test. Check. Testing. Uh, Leanne, uh, why don't you pull the tape recorders out? Okay. Audio test. Uh, Check. Testing. One, two, three, four. Last summer, I went back to Topeka, Kansas for my grandfather's 100th birthday. The rest of my family was also arriving. My uncle had just come in from Colorado the evening before, and my mother from Washington, D.C. that morning. Of course, my grandmother was there, and Rita, who's lived and worked with my grandparents for many years. And I was in the library with Papa, reading the morning paper. The first time I saw Alf Landon was in 1928, when he drove over from Independence to watch primary election returns with my father as they came over the AP wire. He was really dressed up. I remember especially that he wore black and white shoes. You didn't see many of them in those days. If my recollection is right, he was driving a Cadillac too. And I can remember Frank Carlson saying that Kansas politicians would rather be caught dead than driving a Cadillac. So when he ran for governor, he wore a battered old hat and drove an old car. A trip on a safety ship can make a happy landing with Landon. Cast your vote, strike a better note, and make a happy landing with Landon. Who is this man, Alf Landon? Two-term governor of Kansas, independent oil man, middle-of-the-road conservative. He knows a dime from a dollar. Roosevelt is said to be unbeatable, but Landon steams ahead. For him, the basic campaign issue is that of governmental power and its abuse. President Roosevelt looks calm, taking a day off with his family at Hyde Park. But Landon's voice seems to be gaining strength against Franklin Deficit Roosevelt. Across the country, the cry is heard, let's make it a Landon slide. And while I am president, When I was in fifth grade, my history teacher asked the class, what presidential candidate lost by the greatest number of votes in history? And she looked around the room waiting for an answer, and she looked at me in the back. And she said, Richard Landon Kassebaum, don't you know? And I shrugged my shoulders and slid down my seat. And she said, well, young man, that was your grandfather, Alf Landon. This was news to me, because I thought he had not only won the race, he was still holding office. I decided to make this film to learn more about Papa's life and politics, to get to know the man now referred to as the elder statesman of Kansas and the grand old man of the GOP, to sit down with Papa and get an insider's view into the life of a hundred-year-old politician. What has been the greatest moment of your life? Oh, I've been involved a lot, uh, uh, quite an answer and I'm not going to start into it. Would it be the uh, campaign? No. Would it be Grammy? Everything. I'm not going to start in on that this time of the night. OK. Yeah, there's a good picture of you. You're as an oil man, you're standing in front of uh, one of the oil derricks, which is a real good picture. Well, but as I, I wrote in, my, in the letter I wrote you, I want to talk to you on a more personal level than than what we have done. Did you pick out a time for that when I'm small and 99 years old? 
But every time I've approached you, you're always too busy. I can't see that light shining in my eye. We just want you to be comfortable, because... Well, I was. Okay. Because it was that damn light shining in my eye. Well, that only takes two minutes to put that back. We can do well, that in two minutes. Take the light out of there. I don't need it. I'm not going to try to talk with a light like that shining well, in my eye. That. Okay. And right. you we'll change it. All I can see I, isn't where I work or anything else. Right. What right you there. want is a natural setup, John. Right. I'm going to do whatever you want, but I'm going to tell you what to do. Governor, if I can go back to those old days 30 years ago again. You became rather suddenly a nationally famous man in that campaign. You could have run for the Senate in 38, undoubtedly won. You could have gone to some Wall Street law firm too, but you didn't. You were the exception in, in this matter of political ambition. I often wondered why. But why were you different? Why did you yeah. stay home? Yeah, that's right. You know, the old saying is that uh, uh, political ambition is like a snake's tail, never dies till sunset. <laughs> well, <laughs> but uh, in your sunset years here, you've uh, you've not had this uh, political ambition gnawing at you, and I, I often wonder why. Well, two very simple reasons. Uh, one, uh, Ms. Landon said she's willing to do anything I wanted to do, but with the two youngest, three and four, what kind of an education would they be dragging them back and forth between Kansas and Washington? Two, I thought the Republican Party uh, needed at least one leader that wasn't ambitious for public office. Doris Fleeson summed it all up pretty well. A year or so ago, she wrote me and said, aren't you having fun saying what you want to and getting it printed? <laughs> Where did you, uh, where did you two first meet? <laughs> I don't know. That's your answer. <laughs> he said, um, could I come and see you again? And I said, well, you might call and see you or something like that. And uh, when I went in the house, mother said, who, who was it? And I said, oh, I think an insurance agent. I'm not quite sure. But he called again. We called several times. Well, sure, we did a few things. I do remember going on a duck hunting trip on the Missouri River with him one time. I think I was in junior high school then. Lived on a houseboat. It's quite an experience for me. I, you know, that was a big time. <laughs> I always enjoyed watching Dad sort of uh, perform, so to speak. I mean, he, uh, he loved to give us a lesson in, in history at the dinner table or politics or how something uh, should be handled from that standpoint. There's Wilkie. Yeah. <laughs> What'd you think of Wilkie? Uh, pure faker. Well, that takes care of him, doesn't it? You've been following the uh, Persian Gulf at all? Oh, yes. Well, there's a lot of tension. Yes, volatile situation. Of, of course, there's a lot of tension right now. I was talking to Mom about the other day, and she was pretty uh, concerned about it. She had suggested sending more minesweepers in instead of our big battleships to escort ships through the channel. Oh, no. are we on the, now just take that off for a minute. That was a public comment. Well, whether it was a public comment or not, it should not be repeated by any of us. They might completely misunderstand what you said about what she said. All right, go ahead, go ahead. Are you well, in this? I may be, All but right. not if you're going to 
not if you're gonna don't want to do it. Oh, we're all set, so go ahead. All right. What does it mean to you to be a father? Well, I had no sense of responsibility. So I was two or three years old when he ran for president, and he was gone all the time then, and then, as you know, anyone that's run for political office, such as president, they still have quite a few, few demands on their time and their life. But he just wasn't around that much until, oh, I was probably out of high school. He never said he wanted me to go into politics, but I think he was extremely disappointed when I did not want to go into politics. Could he understand? No. Why he didn't share the interest? No. I don't think he's ever been able to understand other people's feelings. You ever if, like if they were, if they contradicted his feelings, if they were different feelings than what he wanted you to feel. You'll make it probably a little longer than that. Happy birthday. Dad's here. Oh, son. Happy birthday. Well, nice to see you. How are you? I was hoping I'd get Well, I'm here every week, it seems like. <laughs> Well, we got a lot to talk about. I've got to go back this afternoon. Well, we'll have to wait a week or so. Besides, you've got enough that's going on today. You don't need to talk or think business today. No, no, no. I didn't mean to talk today, but I do have a lot of I do have a lot of business I want to talk to you about tomorrow or next day. I can't. I have to go back. What about What about your family? How would you like to be remembered? Oh. Now, I'm not going to spoil this for sitting here and a lot of uh, uh, questions like that. Don't you trust me? <laughs> well, it's not a case of trusting you. God Almighty, is it? It's a case of de everyone having their own ideas. That's the trouble. You want me to trust you? Uh, my ideas fit your ideas, and I think that's the trouble. I never have thought of Dad particularly as uh, someone who was your best friend in doing activities together. That was not Dad's role. I would probably have gone to Mother uh, more with a problem. It's hard to assess what role Grammy's played. I, in many ways, it's been enormously supportive and sort of a in an unacknowledged way, I think, because she's just totally given her life to whatever he wanted to do. Sometimes not without a great deal of disappointment on her part, I think. Um, and one thing I've never been able to understand, for instance, is why she gave up playing the piano and the harp. She was quite an accomplished musician. And uh, I think it would have given her something it would have been a great deal of enjoyment, particularly after we were all grown up and left home. My father was lover of music. First guy gave me the harp. And he loved good music and encouraged me without being obvious about it. And uh, Alfred, I don't think. I don't know whether he ever heard me play or How did it feel to have your daughter run for the U.S. Senate? I'm delighted, of course. It's great. That's another part of the family activities. Uh, uh, it's carrying on. She made up her mind she wanted to run for Congress, and so she did, and won. Dad really didn't want me to run for office. It was, it was Mother who had initially uh, encouraged me to run. I can remember Dad being just as adamant that it was a mistake, and I think early on he, he thought I would eventually talk myself out of it and not do it. I also think that maybe he uh, thought that I would lose, and it would be a reflection on him. She is the first woman 
in the long history of a hundred years of our political party to receive this recognition. Our daughter, the junior United States Senator from Kansas, Nancy Landon Casabon. She told a group of farmers that she was opposed to government setting a parity, for example. She's a Thank very effective very lady. Much. In 1936, in Topeka, Kansas, in his speech accepting the Republican nomination for president, my father said, in common with all my countrymen, I look forward to the America that is to be. It should be an America that shall bring to bear the whole of her spiritual force in common effort. An America for the sake of all mankind, as well as ourselves, that shall never lose the faith that human freedom is a practical ideal. I've always been very active in my life. I walk out now to the stone wall that you took some pictures of it. I walk out there every morning, first thing, and around and back, and I walk out again in the afternoon, weather permitting. Out of the day, these hot days, maybe I'll only make one trip. Well, what else can I get for you fellas? <laughs> <laughs> Every time I open my mouth, you start sitting, sitting set to shoot pictures of them. And you do shoot them. I have some coconut pudding and a watermelon. I had watermelon at noon, and I was on my head, and I had... Oh, how about cantaloupe? Yeah. No, no, a peach. Oh, the peach. I... Oh, sliced peach. Yeah. Okay. Forgot about that. <laughs> okay. Want that? Cake and... and... You want the cake with the ice cream? No, on the peach. On the peach, and you want the chocolate cake with the ice cream. All right, I want something else. Okay. <laughs> There's your cake. All right. Ice cream with your cake. All right. Now, is that all you want? What else you got? What car do you think best describes Papa? Hmm. Major Arcana card number five. Rather inflexible personality. If I did a spread on him. He'd probably pull every uh, king in the deck. He'd also probably pull the Ace of Swords because that represents power. He's always handled power all his life. He just chose to step away from public manifestations of power for whatever reasons. But I do believe, as I've watched him, that he has had many thoughts that perhaps he may not have made a, a correct decision. I firmly believe that this man was destined to be president of this country. Today, we celebrate Alf Landon's first century, half the life of our nation since the framing of the Constitution. As you know, it seems right to me that Alf Landon was born in the centennial year of the Constitution and is now part of its bicentennial year. And after all, you ask what the America that our Constitution created is, what it means, and you'll get back many answers. But the funny thing is that no matter what you say when you talk about America, 
you'll also be saying something about Alf Landon. In a hundred years, Alf Landon has chased many dreams and caught most of them. Alf, happy birthday and God bless you. several weeks now. Several weeks? We've been doing it for several months. What do you think about the, this film? I think you might have had some better subjects. Mm -hmm. Now what are we shooting? Well, we're just sitting here talking. Well, uh, that's all we're shooting. A grandfather and a grandson talking to each other. Well, that's all right. Well, that, that makes a good picture. You think I got to know you better through the course of this film? Oh, I think so. Very definitely. What do you say? time, I didn't know what to tell Papa. I think in a lot of ways, I got to know him better than anybody else. But we never had the talk that I had envisioned. A talk where, no, a talk where we might um, find out we have things in common, where we could have a talk about politics, or a talk where I could say that I loved him. Good night. Good night. I'm going to warm up some pants. Now you're going to bed now. That's where I'm headed. And then I'll come up after you. Okay. All right, dear. My grandmother told me that Whenever Papa heard that I was coming home to film, he would get really excited and, and couldn't wait for me to get there. But this seemed really funny to me because all we did when I got there was argue. And in a lot of ways, I think I was providing him with his last debate. Oh, you know, debate over how he would be remembered. He lived every moment of his life a stubborn, determined and an independent politician. That's how he lived out his final days with me, and that's the man he allowed me to capture on film. Haven't you taken a picture of me going up these stairs before? No? Don't talk! That's what the trouble is, you get me doing the same thing over again. Well, we haven't taken a picture of this yet. Yes, taking the same picture. safety ship and make a happy land and with Lennon. Cast your vote, strike a better note and make a happy land and with Lennon. He is the man we all shall follow, plain folks like you and me. He knows the time from a dollar and how to use it with economy. Don't hesitate or you'll be too late for that right to recovery. So make a happy London with London and land in the land of the free. 